Hey everybody, it's Chris Bumbray here again at CinemaCon 2023 and I just came out of the opening night Sony presentation and it was a really good one. So in previous years, Sony has usually shown us a movie or at least significant footage. Uh, the first year that I was here in 2021, they actually showed us the entire Ghostbusters Afterlife movie months before it opened. And then last year we saw a good chunk of Bullet Train. It wasn't as much footage by comparison this year. They just showed mostly trailers and extended clips, but the stuff that we saw was really good so I'm gonna kind of break it down for you guys right away first of all it started off off the top with just a little tease for bad boys 4 no official title yet but we did see Will Smith and Martin Lawrence back in character uh, and yeah I mean they look great it looks like a bad boys movie apparently they're in the fourth week of shooting so which is further along than I thought it was actually Eric Dane from Euphoria is playing the villain really didn't see much from the movie but you know bad boys for life was such a huge hit made something like 500 million dollars worldwide and that was as the pandemic hit, right? Probably would have made even more than that. So I think that there's gonna be a massive audience for this movie. We also got a very small taste of the Ghostbusters Afterlife sequel. Again, they're still shooting the movie. Um, it comes out in December, which is actually pretty fast, uh, but there's no footage for them really to show. Uh, all they did was they kind of revealed that it takes place in New York. And what was neat is that we saw the whole cast wearing their Ghostbusters uniforms, including Paul Rudd and Carrie Coon's characters, who were the parents in the last movie, or, the, or at least the adults, and didn't really get in on the Ghostbusting action. So. I don't know, it'll be really cool to see Paul Rudd fighting ghosts. And he's also clean shaven in this one, as opposed to the last movie where he had a big beard. Nothing much for Ghostbusters Afterlife, unfortunately. But we did see some good footage from the Spider-Verse movies. Marvel, Sony affiliated Marvel anyway, is going hard R with Craven the Hunter. So Aaron Taylor Johnson premiered the, the trailer for us and Apparently, what we saw is not coming online anytime soon, and it was more just the teaser, but it really showcased the R rating. I mean, there's F-bombs every two seconds. The gore is insane. It looks very different from, you, you probably, one of the reasons they were allowed to have the R rating is because of John Wick Chapter 4 making so much money, but this is definitely not John Wick style. I mean, he's hacking people apart with knives and edged weapons, and there's even a scene where he bites a guy's nose off and spits it at the camera. I mean, it, it, it's, it's amazing to think that we ever thought this movie would be PG-13 because it's anything but. Russell Crowe plays his father. It seems like they're assassins. It does look like Craven's not necessarily a hunter of animals in this. It looks like he's more, you know, hunting poachers at a certain point. So I guess Craven's not a, an animal or a trophy hunter, or his trophies are humans in this case. They did say that they're teeing him up to be a new super villain. So I guess he'll at least be an anti-hero to some extent, uh, which is kind of similar to the comics, actually. Um, Craven the Hunter looks really great. We also saw another 14 minutes of Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. We saw the first 15 minutes of the movie last year, which introduced us to all the different variations of Spider-Man that live in the Spider-Verse and how they recruit Gwen Stacy. Uh, we saw Jessica Drew, who's voiced by Issa Rae. Uh, we saw Miguel O'Hara, who's voiced by Oscar Isaac. This time, we didn't see any any of them, but we saw another 14 minutes from the film. All very unfinished footage, but I mean, it looks really great to me. Um, one of the things that's kind of cool is that they, they acknowledge the fact that Miles Morales has feelings for Gwen Stacy, but she says something interesting to him, how whenever Spider-Man and Gwen Stacy hook up, it always ends in tragedy. Of course, Peter Parker is dead in her world, and Gwen Stacy's died in many other versions of Spider-Man, so you can kind of see why she'd be reluctant. It looks like a really good mixture of, you know, action, comedy, and a lot of drama. I mean, the first one, to me, is probably the greatest Spider-Man movie that we've ever gotten, and I really think that this one could be even better, but we'll see. We'll see. I'm very excited for this one, though. And it comes out in something like two months, so it'll be here pretty soon. Otherwise, you know, we saw some footage from uh, No Hard Feelings, which is an R-rated comedy with Jennifer Lawrence. We we'd seen the trailer before, but this clip, I was, I was kind of sold when I saw the trailer. Jennifer Lawrence actually looks like she really nails comedy, and there's a really funny clip that they showed where she's trying to adopt a dog that's an ex-canine that's addicted to cocaine, and she says cocaine and the dog goes crazy. <laughs> it was actually pretty funny. Maybe it sounds stupid as I'm describing it, but it's it's actually really funny if you watch the if you watch the clip itself. There's also you know a romantic comedy coming out with Glenn Powell and Sydney Sweeney. I mean, talk about an attractive cast. They came out on stage and Jaws just dropped. Um, I mean, is that one of the good things about Sony is that they've got a really wide variety of movies coming out. They've even got Insidious Five, The Red Door coming, uh, but they didn't show you us much from that one. Not much more than we saw last week anyway when they released the trailer. We also got a look at some early footage from Gran Turismo. Uh, it looks like it was a pretty well cut together trailer. This movie 
comes out in August, so I'm assuming that we're going to get the full trailer pretty soon. But what's interesting about Gran Turismo is that it's from PlayStation Films, who are working with Sony now, and of course it did Uncharted. This is not an adaptation of the game Gran Turismo, because how could you really adapt it? But instead, it's based on a true story about a Gran Turismo champ who was trained as a race car driver and ended up getting into the profession. Um, so David Harbour stars in this, Orlando Bloom plays like the head of marketing for Gran Turismo, and it looks like what they're trying to do with this movie is kind of what Top Gun Maverick did with flying, where they're really trying to put you into the into the race car so you can really feel it and give you kind of a visceral experience like you haven't had before. I've always been a fan of Neil Blomkamp. I think he gets a really rough rap from people. Um, I mean, I even like Chappie, and not many people like Chappie. So I'm excited to see him do something like Gran Turismo, which looks like a total departure from him because it's essentially a drama. Now, some people may say that the fact that it's a video game adaptation that's not really an adaptation at all might actually be a handicap, but I don't think so. I think that that might give the movie a certain clout or cachet that it wouldn't have had otherwise. And it looks like just a really well-done drama uh, in the vein of, I don't even maybe like The Karate Kid or more accurately something like Days of Thunder where it's this kid who's kind of raising from poverty and becoming a champion. One movie that they did tee up that looks amazing is The Equalizer 3 with Denzel Washington. Now, there's a very good chance that by the time you see this, the trailer may actually be online already because apparently they were going to release it soon. And the movie comes out in just a couple of months, so I wouldn't be surprised if the trailer is already online. Um, but anyway, in this, Robert McCall is retired, living in Italy. He's made kind of a surrogate family. They get attacked by the mafia. The mafiosos start dying in very, very violent and gruesome ways. And you see a little bit of Dakota Fanning at the end of the trailer. She doesn't seem to be in jeopardy with this time, which is different than Man on Fire. She seems to be an American that's kind of investigating McCall, possibly in the CIA. I guess it remains to be seen. We also got a quick look at Ridley Scott's Napoleon. So Sony didn't produce this movie. Sony actually got a deal with Apple Films to release this theatrically. And Tom Rothman, who runs Sony, came out on stage and said they plan on giving it a robust theatrical rollout. Out. He did mention that Ridley Scott's never won an Academy Award. This could be the movie that puts him back in the conversation. And it's crazy to me that it was ever considered to go to streaming because, I mean, it really looks you know, like a Ridley Scott epic. You know, if you've, if you've seen Gladiator and Kingdom of Heaven, which I'm sure you have if you're watching this video, it looks to be in that same ballpark. Uh, the footage that we saw wasn't a trailer. It was actually a clip from the movie, which showed Napoleon setting up an ambush for Russian soldiers. They advance, he gets them on the ice, they use cannons to crush the ice, and they all die horrible, gruesome deaths. I mean, if you like historical action movies and battle sequences. This looks great. And I have, I have to say one of the things that's kind of cool about it is that Joaquin Phoenix, who I really love as an actor, sometimes, you know, goes a little bit overboard doing a thing or a bit, you know, and I was thinking when he was cast as Napoleon that he'd really go overboard with the French accent, but it looks like he's actually quite subtle in this. And I think that this may actually really end up being an amazing movie. Vanessa Kirby from The Crown plays Josephine. Uh, we didn't see anything from her, but Again, it looks like it could be awesome. Um, that was pretty much all that we saw. Uh, I mean, it was it was a nice little presentation, short but sweet compared to what we sometimes see at CinemaCon. We didn't see a ton of footage from movies, but we did get first looks at a lot of trailers, and everything has me pretty hyped, especially, I would say, The Equalizer 3 and, of course, uh, Craven the Hunter, which I don't think any of us expected was actually going to be a hardcore R-rated action movie. But then again, if you get J.C. Chandor, you know, who directed Triple Frontier and Most Violent Year to direct it, you'd hope that maybe they would make it gritty and grounded to some extent and that looks like exactly what they did with Craven the Hunter so I'm very excited to see both of those anyway plenty more to come from CinemaCon this week we've got tons of panels coming up plus we're gonna see the flash so you'll get my reaction to that pretty soon so stay tuned